Aditya L1 again is uh, the mission that ISRO hopes uh, is going to be successful and there is a great amount of enthusiasm. But what do you think will be the big takeaways from the Aditya One is the uh, spacecraft which is play which will be placed at the Langragian point as we know. You know, Langragian points are where the gravity of Sun and Earth uh, is equal, and it is made for observing the uh, observations of the Sun. Which is Sun is our nearest star, and by studying the Sun, we can make models. Or astronomers have been making models about how other stars would be. So, in that sense, it's a very much a technological mission as well as a, a solar scientific uh, mission, and therefore. Uh, these two missions can't be compared. Um, uh, um, there will be one interesting factor is to take the spacecraft and put it at that um, uh, a Lagrangian point, and uh, that would be a, uh, that would be a, some kind of a small challenge. But uh, that challenge can be overcome by anyone without. Uh, I, I'm sure ISRO will overcome the challenge and put the spacecraft. And by putting the space uh, satellite at Ad uh, Aditya one there. You can monitor the sun 24, uh, 24 hours non-stop, continuous. The sun can be monitored, taken photographs and images sent back to India. Dr. Amitabh Ghosh and also Dr. Arvind Aparanshmi, I'm going to thank you both for sharing your views with us as far as Aditya L1 mission is concerned. Remember, 2nd of September is the day that has been finalized. 11.50 a.m. is when that is going to take off from Sri Harikota in Andhra Pradesh. Pramod Madhav continues to be with us on that big story. Pramod, uh, again, it's not the mission to the sun, really to the halo orbit of the sun. Talk to us a little about when essentially is it going to reach the halo orbit and the objectives of this mission. What is the ISRO saying? Sneha, the launch is expected to be on 11.50 a.m. It is scheduled for September 2nd, 11.50 a.m. And this is going to be a kind of a very interesting path. It's going to go travel for nearly four months covering 1.5 kilo, uh, million kilometers. The actual distance between sun and earth is 151 0.13 million kilometers, so it's almost going to go cover 1% of the distance, and just like how the scientists mentioned, it's called as a Langragian point, which means the orbit, the gravitational pull of Earth and the gravitational pull of Sun, they're going to find a point over there, which is called as L1, and around this L1 point, it's going to go on a circular orbit between these two, not surrounding the Earth or the Sun, but this particular point, and that's why it's called a halo, which means like a circle over the head, it's going to stay over there. This has been chosen to make sure that there is uninterrupted view of the sun because like if it's going to go around the earth there are going to be a kind of eclipse where the sun will be like a, like the satellite cannot see the sun for a certain period of time so avoiding all this this is an extremely ambitious and very much calculated well calculated way of achieving that particular point because you have to calculate the distance you also have to make sure that the gravitational forces of each other these are the sun and the earth are like accurately calculated to hold that satellite over there and collect data the second important aspect here is that when it comes to sun on the surface, the corona, there is something that occurs called as solar flare, which is an, a, like a sudden burst of energy. Scientists across the world are still trying to find out the reasons behind it. But okay. this sudden uh, burst of energy called as solar cyclone or solar flare, that when it reaches Earth, it actually causes disturbance in the weather, weather patterns, the, electro, ele, uh, the uh, magnetic wave patterns and such. So all these things, the data that is going to be collected by Aditya L1 is going to help in actually finding more okay. information about uh, such uh, uh, things on the sun's surface near.